Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. It's been a while. We're back with some more Beyond All Reason replays, and just to update you on real life, everything's good on my end. Our baby boy is here. We are taking care of him. Mom's doing great. Uh, he's growing every day. He eats, he poops, he sleeps, he does all the baby things. It's pretty great. And my wife was very kind and offered me an hour to get in a game of Beyond All Reason Online. Been playing a lot versus the computer. It's a big shout out to my wife for taking care of our boy while I played video games online and I will say that uh, playing against the computer in this game it's honestly great I think uh, the barbarian AI in this game is quite good and I really enjoy just going up against the PCs um, if you haven't done it be sure to check it out even if you're just getting into the game it's a great way to practice they're very strong AIs and you can learn a lot. They play a lot differently than uh, humans, I'll say that. They, uh, they kind of terraform the whole map. Humans, not so much. And they, humans make a lot of mistakes in this game, I will say that. They don't always get anti-nuke. They don't always creep across the map. Anyway, in this game, we're on Supreme Straight. I told you I'd finally get some games of me playing on Supreme Straight, and I am awkwardly in the naval position here on the coastline up here. I'm gonna try my best, though I did make two grunts, and I'm gonna sweep this center because I saw some small units here on radar. Figured they were just some ticks, so I'm rushing in here to take care of Aaron's uh, bots, and it's looking like a good move. Ooh, gotta avoid this laser tower. And there, with these two grunts, we just swept all those units away. And then maybe we can do a little sneak by on this coastline. But more importantly, I want to highlight the players we are up against. I've been watching lots of Beyond All Reason replays on YouTube. Um, shout out to the Brightworks, shout out to Lost Dead Man. Um, and I recognized some of these names on the opposing team Master Toby, Gof. Aaron, these are players that I have seen play at incredibly high levels. You can see the little chevrons next to their names. Uh, Toby and Goff, very experienced American players. Aaron, a great Spanish player. Uh, I'm terrified of going up against these players. And it's very possible that I will be in a lane against them. It looks like Aaron is down here. And it looks like Dario's in the Geo spot. And look at these little hover tanks coming in from Sir Ice Cream. He's our high ranker. And they're doing good work against these uh, against these metal extractors. I like seeing that. But yeah, I'm terrified that I might be in a lane up against Toby or Goph. And look at that. My worst fears confirmed. Looks like I'm up against Goph in this naval spot and he has already made it to the coast using a shoreline torpedo launcher to secure his uh, shipyard over here. I don't really know what I'm doing in terms of navy so I'm simply going to secure this coastline with torpedo launchers and then use it to put down tidal generators to supplement an economy of my own on the shore. So we'll kind of split our economy between land and sea and hope for the best but really we're going to be taking notes from Goph on how to play this he's the one who will probably teach us how to do this this coastline lane and look at that some hover tanks yep being pinged out we know that there are hover tanks coming from Toby people were saying he loves doing this every game Ooh, and Aaron's commander going down. Polsky is going to try and get in here and reclaim this commander. Here's hoping he gets in and grabs up that metal. Yes, come on, Polsky, grab that. 
Oh, Aaron, of course, advising his teammates, hey, degun the wreckage of the commander. In case you didn't know, if you degun wreckage, it will destroy it. Paulski, you need to get this reclaim. Very nice. That's a lot of metal going his way. Look at that. He's completely full up. It's starting to overflow to the rest of the team. Although he has stopped, I think he was going to put down maybe some metal storage. He's worried that he's overflowing it, but he really should reclaim the last of this because uh, Asif Nawaz is about to degun the uh, commander wreckage. Yep, there it goes. Should have grabbed it while he could. Who cares if it goes to your teammates? You got to grab that. We're doing a good job expanding out onto the oceans. We've got all of those metal extractors, got all the metal extractors on shore or uh, on the land. Looking good. And we've even got a submarine out. We'll use that to maybe target down these extractors. Looks like we already took out an extractor over here and over here. Toby going for these nearby metal extractors. We took care of them. We'll speed things up. Looking like some good aggression down here from these hover tanks. Uh, Sir Ice Cream doing a good job with these hover tanks. Finding winds and using the rocket launcher hovercrafts on the front lines. I don't really see that that often, these rocket hover tanks. I didn't even know you could get rocket launcher hover tanks, these possums. These are, yeah, it looks like an armada unit. Probably great for knocking down these static defenses. And look at this aggression from our team. This is great. Asif Nawaz is going to lose his commander if he's not careful. These rocket bots do good work. If commanders aren't moving, then those rockets will just focus them down. Ooh, good dodge of the D-gun there. Sir Ice Cream. Great work. Microing those units. Ooh, but the rocket hover tanks are coming forward. That is not a good idea. Those need to stay back just kind of running into a huge mass of uh, bots from Aaron. I think Aaron's playing this pretty well, just massing up these T1 units. They'll do very well against the rocket bots. They'll do great against these rocket launcher hover tanks. Okay, Aiden is offering T2. Looks like his shop is open. People are sending him metal. I believe he shares a constructor with me, but uh, unfortunately I didn't really have metal to pay him, so it was kind of just a donation. Ooh, and that, that plasma cannon back here is going to start bombing all these units from far away. I'd love to see these Janices come forward, try to take out, yeah, this gauntlet. Or if that rocket launcher hover tank could do something. Oh, but here come all those pawns from Aaron. You can see they're rushing the rocket bots, and they're going to do pretty well against them. Unfortunately, the Janus are effective against grunts, but yeah, once the Janus are gone, these T1 bots are going to do well. Polsky being very diligent about getting this 4.3 metal extractor up. I like to see that. I think a lot of players just forget about these metal extractors. If they're up for more than 10 seconds, they're pretty much paying for themselves, so I think they're worth it. Polsky could go for some D-guns here. Oh, but he's going to lose his commander. That is way too many guns. Ooh, or uh, pawns, I should say. And now there's more commander wreckage here gotta reclaim that. How are the South Seas doing? Looks like a combined effort from uh, Polsky, Sir Ice Cream, and Snidely Whiplash, who is not finding any opposition here. Looks like some Dragon's Teeth were put down on the coastline, and Sefi is playing it purely land-based. So the oceans are completely snidely whiplashes, and he's taking advantage of it. He's grabbed up this island, and he's grabbed up all of these metal extractors. That's looking really good. Definitely want all those metal extractors, and he's already got his uh, T2 shipyard up, so he's going to upgrade all this economy. That'll really give us the resource advantage. We should start to see some T2. I mean, Snidely's already up there. It looks like... Uh, looks like Aiden Knot is handing out the T2 constructors. Yep, there's the one that he handed out to me. I'm going to upgrade all of my metal extractors when I can. And I love all the uh, title generators, although my commander is stuck in here. I need to 
wake him up, reclaim some of these tidal generators. And we are lucky we detect some of these orcas from Gof, these submarines heading north. We're going to respond with our own submarines. We need to send our orcas up north. Yep, there we go. Unfortunately, we do have some static defenses backed up by sonar. We'll be able to pick up these, uh, these submarines as they come into our territory. How's the front line looking? We're starting to see those T2s. It looks like we've got a rocket launcher up front. Oh, more of these rocket bots. And here come all of those pawns moving forward. This huge mass of T1. They just shred these rocket bots. The Janus are great here, but once the uh, once the, the pawns get on top of this army, there's not much it can do. Okay. We've got a jammer and a radar uh, vehicle here. That'll do good work. And Mausers are coming out from Sir Ice Cream. Glad to see that T2 transition. And we've got some shurikens coming from uh, Hiccup. Hiccup's giving us kind of some light air support here. I'd love to see them come forward right now. I'm not sure what they're doing. Just kind of patrolling back and forth. We'd love to see those shurikens come forward and help out here, especially against these tanks. Oh, nice Jaguars. Those lightning tanks do well against clumped units. Just a couple static defenses here. That might be just enough to deal with this tank push. Yep. And that's really advantageous for us because all of the metal died right here. So this is all metal that can be reclaimed. And you can see, yeah, the construction vehicle is already grabbing it up. In the South Sea, missile cruiser coming out. These longbows are going to do great damage versus the coast. They have huge range, and I love how Snidely Whiplash is just absolutely dominating this sea, and he's not producing any extra units. Instead, it's all eco, and then just what he needs. A cloaking ship, a missile cruiser, and looks like some anti-air. Although, ouch, looks like a sniper bot hit his longbow. Oh, whoa, what is this? Look at all these platypus. So these are amphibious bots that move along the surface of the water. They have all these lasers. Looks like they're just shredding all of this. Oh, man. And there's a bunch of anti-air turrets. Those aren't going to do a thing against all these units. He needs to ping this. He needs to warn that Cephi has a huge platypus ball, and it's probably going to be coming towards his shoreline or up onto this island. Really would love to see some of these platypus move up onto this island. Although, Snidely's commander might be able to degun a lot. Okay, nice. Snidely saying, help in C. Need help here. Would love to see these shuriken come over and assist him. The front line has turned into a bit of a stalemate, but yeah, all of that metal got reclaimed. Look, all the wreckage is gone. Looks like Polsky grabbed it up. He's got a huge bank. He can really start to push out more units. Sniper bots are out there. Really need the um, yeah. Really need the radar and stealth vehicles to come forward. And looks like uh, Equinox is making a few of his own sniper bots. And look at this. Those platypus are moving in. Although they're not going up onto the island, they really need to go up there. Fortunately, there are some paladins. These cruisers are doing somewhat well against the platypus. And the platypus don't deal too much damage, unfortunately. They're starting to get on shore, but it looks like Sir Ice Cream is rallying some jaguars over here. The jaguars should do very well against them. Yeah, the, crew, the Paladins have already done some great damage here. And also, all this wreckage here, Snidely Whiplash should be able to just recollect it. Uh, he'll be able to reclaim all that metal, and it won't be an issue. These uh, lightning tanks need to move in. <laughs> yeah, there's the ping. Oh, but they just move forward into the lightning tanks. And now they're dead. Okay. All right, Snidely, now you can rebuild. The nice part is these metal extractors, these T2 metal extractors. Oh, and this naval fusion reactor. 
They're all underwater. The platypus couldn't do anything to them. Aaron coming forward with more of those pawns, and they're working out really well because the units here were basically just artillery and rocket launchers. There needed to be Janus, there needed to be tanks, and just some static defenses would have done really well against these T1 units. Flamethrower turrets would have been great. Man, they're really duking it out here. Love to see the uh, Quakers, the mobile artillery coming out. Looks like it's backed up by a Banisher as well. During all this, my navy is engaging with Gofs, and we're learning just how Gof handles the sea. And clearly it's build up a huge force and do one massive push. Don't just do little engagements. Instead, it's all or nothing. Build up a big bunch of destroyers, frigates, and he's even got some submarines assisting here. Which is unfortunate, because I am losing a lot here. I did get my advanced construction sub out, but it was no good. These destroyers have a little bit of an underwater attack. Fortunately, Hiccup is coming in with some uh, gunships here. They're doing a good job shooting down all of these, um, all these destroyers. And truly, the most important thing that we can do right now is reclaim all of these wreckage. And I wish one of my uh, construction turrets had lived over here. Yeah, it looks like we're building one right now. But we want these uh, construction turrets grabbing up all of this wreckage. Yeah, I'm using my Death Cavalry subs to collect as much of the wreckage as I can. Yeah, I need to get these over here. Ah, uh, I don't think I should... I don't think I should resurrect these, these ships. I think I should just reclaim them. But you can see my metal is absolutely overflowing because uh, I don't have any production. Now that I've lost this uh, North Sea, I need to relocate to the land. I need to find out where my constructors went. Turns out I accidentally sent them to the front line, so I'm going to need to double those back. But yeah, you can see we're reclaiming a lot. We just reclaimed that shipyard. That just gave us a bunch of metal. And at least we have somewhat of an economy on the shore. Yes, Gof is going to take over this northern sea completely, but maybe we still have a fighting chance ourselves. If we can just stay relevant in the game, that'll be great. And these wasps are going to get destroyed by all these fighters if he sends them in. I don't know about this uh, hiccup. You should send your fighters in first. Yeah, there you go. But a good exchange there. Those T2 interceptors doing quick work. How's the front line looking? Looks like some stealth tanks moving forward, supporting these Mausers. That's allowing them to snipe off some of these units here. And looks like some... Yeah, a little bit of T2 coming from uh, Polsky. Mostly just upgrading his metal extractors. The South Sea is looking great. Look at that. These underwater naval fusion reactors all supported by these naval construction turrets. Yeah, these voyagers, these naval engineers, they're building up a huge economy for Snidely Whiplash. Really cool to see this. Uh, I never really see naval economy, especially at T2 levels, but look at that. Building it up. Uh, Aiden Knot requested metal. He is building a big marauder ball, and I've got metal to spare, so I'm just sending him as much metal as I have. I don't have any production, he does, and he is building a death ball. This mass of marauders is going to do good work. Kind of quiet now. The midline is just a huge mass of artillery and sniper bots. And we'll see a little bit of tick spam coming out as well. And of course there's those platypus again, streaming out into the waters. You can see he's kiting them as much as he can, but I'm not really sure how you deal with these units. The sad part is, every time uh, the platypus come out and destroy ships or die themselves, their wreckage just floats to the bottom and Snidely Whiplash collects it all. 
Ooh, the naval construction turrets are just not doing good. But yeah, look at this. Like I said, he can just reclaim all of this old material. And we're pushing forward. This is a lot of gauntlets supported by sniper bots. This is a dangerous area to enter. But it looks like with all of our Mauser artillery, we might have a chance. Oh, and backed up by starlights too. Sir Ice Cream's got quite a force here, but they need more vision. They need a tick spam going into this area just so they can see what's going on here and deal with all the snipers. Yeah, might want to back the Mausers out. The Starlight's going to have a tough time getting out of here, especially if Aaron continues to spam these, uh, these bots. And yep, there's some more ticks. We're seeing a lot of T1 spam coming into the center here. Oh, but some uh, some tigers made it into the back line. Not sure how they slipped through, but they did. Those platypus that were out here, I think they just engaged over here and died? I'm not sure where they all went. Oh, there they all are. He's kind of flexing on the sea here. Sefi is, yes, now gathering up. I see. Okay, so the, there is tons of wreckage around here, but he's using his air constructors to um, reclaim all of the, the wrecks. I'm reconstructing. I'm basically trying to move away from the shoreline where I know those longbows will fire their cruise missiles at me. So I'm going to slowly move to the right and build up my economy if I can. But the real show is down here as Aiden Knot has built up that huge marauder ball partly funded by myself. I'd like to think if each of these are 970, I'd say I sent him, what, like 5k? So come on, maybe like nine of these are mine? No, sorry, like uh, six or seven of these marauders are all me? That's good to feel. I feel like you're, you know, contributing. Even if I lose the North Sea, I might as well throw my resources to someone who can use them at the right time. Yeah. The opponents are panicking, because this is a lot of marauders, and these units here are not going to be able to deal with them. Ah, there's all of the platypus moving in. But a good clog with all these T1 units, preventing the uh, platypus from coming on shore. That's allowing these lightning tanks to just uh, chain react and damage all of these units. Would have loved to see some mines put all along this shoreline. That's always a great option if you're worried about these amphibious units coming in. And look at that, a flying fortress, a dragon coming in to try and clean up some of these platypus. Look at that. And all that remains is one platypus over here. That push just got finished. This push is just starting. Aaron trying to deal with the uh, marauders with these pawns again. Really liking Aaron's strategy here, just making tons of pawns. They're surprisingly effective against the um, against the units that we've been producing. The whole back line just got completely ravaged. Uh, unfortunately, the back line was occupied by some very new players for the opposing team. Uh, and that meant the economy just wasn't really there for our opponents. But even if their back line these two players had been really strong players and knew what they were doing, making a really powerful economy. I'm not sure if this Marauder push, I'm pretty sure this Marauder push would have just destroyed them anyway. Regardless of your skill level, a Marauder push like that is going to do great damage. With the backline completely uh, massacred, let's take a look at the resource count here. Yeah, look at that. We are producing around 870 metal per second. Yeah, per second. And then the red team is only making around 550. And now that more of the economy is going down, yeah, if this geo goes down, that's going to be so much less uh, energy heading for our opponents. Yeah, you can just see it drop. Ouch. Really, the only economy left for our opponents is Dario with his three advanced geos and Toby with his three regular fusion reactors. 
you can see nearly everything else has been wiped out. It's just wreckage as far as the eye can see back here. Even Toby's base just completely getting wrecked. Or actually, this was Goaf's. Toby's still hanging out over here. And you can see the North Sea really has gone the full way of Goaf, but he's gonna he's gonna quit, hand over his units. You can see he was doing very well. Secured all those resources. Though I'm actually reclaiming all this old <laughs> all this old tidal generators that are on the uh, the water, knowing that they're gonna get destroyed eventually. But you can see I actually got up a fusion reactor, we're getting up our anti-nuke, we're starting to get an economy out here. We're happy about that. Oh, and one Marauder, staying alive. Aiden kept it alive, must have snuck and hit it somewhere. Look at this, just completely destroying everything here. Just one Marauder can do so much damage. Ouch. Yep, there go the fusions. And now it's pretty much just Dario with the economy. And there's a huge mass of units piling up at the front. It's looking like Sir Ice Cream, Equinox, Revalian. They're all just going to combine their forces and move in. And I'm trying to contribute in any way that I can. I'm even using commandos to put down... Uh, lines of mines along the coastline because I know that this is a weak point for us since I failed to uh, secure it. So I'm going to try and shore up our defenses here. It's a good thing that I can do while I uh, try to get my economy back up and running. But yeah, it was a good game. Uh, I learned a lot about how to handle this North Sea from Gof. I think in the future we're going to just do one massive push to try and completely dominate the ocean. And then we get the advantage of reclaiming all of that juicy metal. There's the chain reaction as the opposing team surrenders. Anyway, big shout out to Go to Toby for showing me a lot of... <laughs> showing me a lot in this game and in all these other games that I've seen them play in. So keep up the good work. I'll keep learning from you while I can. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you for the next video. See you then.